In today's video, I'm going to show you every step I took to create my very own gas fire pit. But this isn't your parents' backyard fire pit. This one features a built-in 100 watt Bluetooth subwoofer, mesmerizing LED animations, and the main attraction, a flame that moves to the beat of the music. Welcome to Tech Random. Hey everyone, it's Chris, and real quick I wanted to let you guys know that I did not forget about the contest from my last video. If you're interested in hearing who won, be sure to stick around to the end and I'll announce that. Also, if you're interested in building this project yourself, go down to the description below, I'll have links to everything I use. I will also have a link to my Instructables page where you can find full written instructions. This project was pretty expensive, but right around the end of it, Next PCB was kind enough to reach out to me and offer to sponsor it. And I've never had a sponsorship before, so it's pretty cool for me, especially as a small YouTuber. Next PCB is a high quality professional PCB manufacturer. Each file you send them is double checked by a PCB engineer with more than 10 years of experience. They also handle the whole process, including prototyping, manufacturing, assembly, testing, and final shipment. Use the links down in the description to get $5 off your first order. I'm super thankful that they reached out to me, especially on a project this big. If you guys want to help support me and this channel, go ahead and click on those links down in the description. Let's jump into the build. I'm going to start by building the frame that's going to hold everything once it's done. I've drawn a sketch in Fusion 360, so I have kind of an idea of what it's all going to look like when it comes together. I'm going to be cutting the outer boards out of this white MDF I got at the hardware store. I really like this stuff because it's cheap and I don't have to do a lot of work to make it look good. The size of our fire pit is based on a 24 inch by 12 inch acrylic sheet that I bought. We'll see why later, but the inner diameter of our box is going to be 24 inches by 12 inches. And I'm gonna make it four boards tall, which is about 22 inches. I'm going to be using my miter saw to make 45 degree angle cuts. This way, the edges will come together nice and clean. For the longer boards, I'll be measuring 24 inches from the inside of the cut going out. And for the shorter boards, I'll be measuring 12 inches from the inside of the cut going out as well. This way we can ensure the inside of our box will be 12 inches by 24 inches, and the outside will be that plus the thickness of the wood. Now that all the sidewalls are cut, I'm going to cut four lengths of this 2 by one I also got from the hardware store. These cuts will be 22 inches long to match the final height of the fire pit. Now that everything's cut, I'm going to start to assemble the box. I'm going to start with the long walls, drilling the 22 inch 1 by 2 boards into each end of the long panels. Both of the side panels are done. I definitely need to work on my woodworking abilities though. Hopefully I can clean them up a little bit before the final product. Before I do any more work on the box, I want to make sure I have all the internals working so I can put it all together. So I'm going to get started with the speaker system. I'm going to be using the speaker driver I found on Amazon because it can power two mid-range speakers and a subwoofer. And it even has built-in Bluetooth capabilities. For the speakers themselves, I'm using these 4-inch mid-range speakers as well as an 8-inch subwoofer. These speakers are meant for a car stereo, but I'm really hoping that I can just plug them in and they'll work with this driver. Let's find out. All right, so initially I had the wiring wrong. I want this one, but I had another wire connecting these two. So I removed it. Let's test it out. Oh yeah, I think it's working now. Now that we know the speakers work, I can get to work on actually building the fire itself. In order to achieve the dancing flame effect that I'm going for, I'm going to be building something called a Rubens tube. For those of you who've never heard of it, it's basically a metal tube that has a latex end with a speaker on one end and it's solid on the other side. The speaker vibrates the latex, which causes standing waves to form inside the tube. When there's gas pumped into the tube and the gas flame is out coming out the top, what that basically does is cause the standing waves to show in the fire. And with music, the waves are constantly changing so it'll look like the flame is dancing to the music. If you want to know more about Rubens tubes, give it a Google search. It's really interesting to see how it works. There's a lot of physics behind it. 
I'm going to start with this 3 inch galvanized steel duct. I need to cut it down to size. For me that's 2 feet minus the thickness of the speaker which comes out to about 22 inches. Next I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole every inch. To do this easily I've marked a straight line with masking tape almost exactly in the center of the tube. The reason I didn't center the holes was so that I could drill the hole for the gas to come in on the opposite side without having to worry about the hole crossing the seam in the pipe. The quarter inch MIP hose adapter can be screwed into this hole and sealed with aluminum tape to prevent leaks. Once all the holes are done, I can seal the pipe with aluminum tape to prevent any leaks. They don't sell 3 inch pipe caps at the hardware store in my town, and I couldn't find one on Amazon either, so I'm going to cover one end of the pipe with aluminum tape instead. This should be fine as long as you do a thorough leak check before lighting anything on fire. The other end will get a balloon that's been cut into a circle. This will act as the diaphragm of the tube. With the tube done, I can now turn my focus over to the gas system. I legitimately spent three hours at Home Depot trying to figure this out, but I think what I finally came up with will actually work. I'm going to be using the one pound camping tanks of propane instead of a 20 pound tank because I don't want to have to lug around the heavy tank and I also want the tank to be able to fit inside the fire pit and hide away nicely so you don't have to look at it. If I'm using this fire pit frequently enough, I will invest in one of the refillable one pound tanks, but they're a little more expensive so I didn't buy one this time. The tank will connect to a 20 pound adapter that will screw into the flow regulator. This will connect to a 3 8 flare 3 8 inch MIP union that can be screwed into a 3 8 inch brass ball valve. The other end of the valve connects to a 3 8 MIP to quarter inch inner diameter hose adapter. This is where I'll connect a quarter inch inner diameter silicon hose. The other end of the hose will connect to the quarter inch MIP adapter that was screwed into the hole in the bottom of the tube. Be sure to use PTE tape on all of your brass pipe connections and check for leaks before exposing anything to a flame. Initial testing did not go as planned. Holy. So I went to Home Depot one more time, got some large flat washers, bent them to the curve of the tube, and resealed everything with aluminum tape. I was then able to test it again and everything seemed to work fine. The one thing I will say is when I tested it with music, the taped up end seemed to be absorbing a lot of the vibrations, so I wasn't getting very much of an effect. So I'm going to have to find something solid to replace that taped up end with. For now it's time to start cutting the holes for the speakers and the control boards. Conveniently the subwoofer came with a template in paper so I could easily trace the hole and cut it out. For the other ones I just kind of had to guess and hope for the best. To cut the holes, I used the good old fashioned drill and jigsaw method. I'll also need a hole for the gas valve handle and a place to insert the one pound canisters. I'm going to put those in the back. Now I have to fix the tube. I ended up buying a four inch end cap and aluminum taping it in the cleanest way I could figure out. Next I have to cut down the bottom piece as well as a large piece of wood for the LEDs to sit on. The acrylic also needs to be cut down in the same way to fit the 1x2s holding the frame together. With all the boards cut, it's time to start soldering the LED matrix. For this, I'm going to use my favorite WS2812B LEDs that I feature in just about all of my projects. These will be connected to a knockoff Arduino Nano I've had in my collection for a couple of years and I just want to get rid of. I'm going to solder the strips together in a snake pattern and solder the leading data in pin to pin 4 on my board. For power, I will be using this 24 volt supply. This is because the speaker driver I'm using recommends 24 volts. I bought a 10 foot plug that I'll connect to the proper pins on the supply, and I'll connect the 24 volt and ground outputs to the speaker driver board. I'm going to use another 24 volt output to connect the 24 volt to 5 volt step down. The 5 volt output will connect to the microcontroller and both sides of the LEDs. Now I can finally start to put together the box. I'm going to add a mesh in front of my 3D printed speaker covers for better sound quality and protection. Then I can screw them along with the speakers to the front of the box. I'm also going to add a little place for the speaker driver to sit 
and use the standoffs it came with to hold it in place. I can screw on the bottom, lay in the LEDs, and add the supports for the acrylic. Next I'm going to attach the side panels with two screws each for added strength. These screws will be visible from the outside, so I'm going to try and keep them in a straight line. The final step is going to be to add the wood for the tube to sit on. This will insulate the heat from melting the acrylic and also give me something to attach the speaker to. Finally, I can pour in the rocks, plug everything in, and relax by the fire. Before we get to the money shots, I wanted to take a minute to talk about my channel and announce the winners of the contest I had in my last video. If you don't really care, feel free to skip ahead, but for those of you who do care, here's an update. This summer I've been trying to upload videos twice a month, and if you've been keeping track of the channel, you'll realize that I haven't uploaded in over a month now. And that's because the video that I had planned for two weeks ago had about two hours worth of the footage corrupted, and I decided to just hold off on that one and turn my attention to this project instead. Spending more time planning this project out has really given me the opportunity to focus on my vision for what I want the video to look like in the end, and I think this is the direction I'm going to go for my videos from now on. So you guys can expect about one video a month with this level of quality put into it, and I want to try and hold myself to that and make each video better than the last. I also wanted to mention that this is my first sponsored video ever, and since my YouTube channel isn't actually monetized, this is like the first time I've actually made money on one of these videos. I think that's pretty cool. I've kind of poured all of that budget back into the project, but I'm hoping that I can do this more in the future and have higher budget projects and make more exciting things for you guys. Moving on to the contest winner. In my last video, I asked you guys what I should build next, and I got some really good answers. I'll throw some of them up on the screen right now. But I'm sure you guys all want to know who the winner is, and it is, drum roll please, Brandon Zykon. Thank you for entering the contest. He suggested that I build some sort of gaming table. He suggested playing Pong on it with buttons to move it, but I want to try and build something that has tiles kind of like this, and it's a touch screen, and I can play different games on it, and it'll have LEDs. If you guys think this is a cool idea, let me know down in the comments below. And Brandon, if you're watching this, comment down below, and I will reply to your comment telling you how you can claim your prize. Thank you for checking out my project. I love interacting with you guys in the comments, and I read and respond to everyone, so keep them coming. But without further ado, let's see how it turned out.